to a special arts edition of Black Nouveau. I'm Joanne Williams. This week, we'll explore the link between fraternity stepping and African boot dance. We'll profile Milwaukee and Nathaniel Stampley, who played Mr. in the Milwaukee Reps production of The Color Purple, and we'll introduce you to the Rafati organ. We begin, though, with some amazing acting. Earlier this year, Marty Goble played 16 characters in a one-woman show. It was called No Child. It was at the Next Act Theater. Here's a scene. Trouble in mind, I'm blue, but I won't be blue always, because the sun is gonna shine on my back door someday. You hear that? Silence. Pure silence. The kind of silence you can only get by spending time in the backwoods. Now, we ain't in the backwoods, though. I'm thinking about retiring there. It is 8.04 a.m., just five minutes before the start of the day, and we are on the second floor of Malcolm X High in the Bronx, USA. Now, over there is my janitor's closet, and to the right of that is the girl's bathroom where the smell of gossip, makeup, and hair pomade fills the air on this bright, shiny morning. Over there is Miss Kennedy's room. She's the principal. For 17 years, she's been in charge of this group of juvenile delinquents. Oh, 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 excuse me. Academically and emotionally challenged youth. She got a lot to work with. Seventeen feet below my very own lay over $100,000 worth of security equipment. That's two metal detecting machines, seven metal detecting wands, five security guards, and three New York City police officers all armed. Only thing we missing is the bomb-sniffing dog. Now, right back there is Miss Tam's room. She's a new teacher. You used to be an associate at the largest investment firm in New York City, and then coming home one day after a long, dreary day of work, she saw an ad. You know the ones. They promise you a lifetime full of glorious meaning and purpose if you just become a New York City school teacher. Uh-huh. The devil's lair on the IRT. <laughs> I like Miss Tan. She's kind and docile, but I don't think she know what she got herself into. You see, I've been working here since 1958, and I've seen a lot of teachers come and go. I said, I've seen a lot of teachers come and go. <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time for good luck. I've seen a lot of teachers come and go. And I do believe that it is the hardest job in this whole wide world. It is the most underpaid, underappreciated, underpaid jobs in this whole crazy universe. But for some miracle of God, every year there are folks that are born knowing that this is what they're going to do with the rest of their life. God, ain't he something? Now, you might say to yourself, Jackson Baron Copefield III, what you doing up there on that stage? You ain't no actor. And now, this I know. And neither of these kids you about to meet. You are about to see a story about a play within a play within a play. And the teacher, or, or a teaching artist, as she likes to call herself, just so folks know she does something else in her free time. The kids are going to call her Miss Sun. And in about two minutes, she's going to walk up those stairs, past my janitor's closet, and into Miss Tam's room. Now, she's going to be something these kids ain't never seen before. Now, you might say to yourself, Baron, I know about the public school system. I watch eyewitness news. You know what I got to say to that? Hush, because you don't know. Hush, because you don't know unless you are here on a daily basis. Hush, 
You don't know unless you are a student, teacher, administrator, or a part of the custodial staff. Hush, because you could learn something. Now, here's lesson number one. Taking the 6th train in only 18 minutes from 59th Street, located in one of the richest congressional districts in the nation, you can get all the way to Brook Avenue, where Malcolm X High is, located in one of the poorest congressional districts in the nation. In only 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. Hush. Marty Goble plays all 16 characters in the play. You must get tired. I do get tired, uh, physically and mentally, but it is a, just a lovely ride, and the audience, of course, makes it uh, much more pleasurable than if I was just playing to an empty room. <laughs> well, absolutely. Well, what's, the, what's the play about? The play is about the public school system, specifically focusing on the No Child Left Behind initiative and how the testing and accountability laws failed and uh, kind of were a disservice to a lot of our children, educators, board of ed people, parents, teachers, all of that. Why did you want to do this play? Why do you think it's important? I think it's important because Milwaukee public schools has certainly been going through its up and downs as far as I've seen since my four children have been in the public school system. And I think it kind of takes the burden off of the students to perform in a situation where they're not being supported in the best way and puts it on the administrators and the powers that be to uh, make sure that they're getting the things that they deserve and the focus of it is arts integration. Do you play administrators, you play a janitor, you play students, you play teachers. You I play a grandmother, <laughs> yeah. How do you play 16 people all by yourself? Uh, it really takes a director that is speaking to me and working with what I physically offer. There's a lot of dialects, so I've worked with a dialect coach. Uh, just simple, simple, clear movements so that the audience knows who they're looking at, because essentially, it is just me. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're you're talking to yourself, but it's not really you. You're talking to another person, and then you become the other person and talk back? Yes. And see the classroom. And that's a huge thing. I have to actually see them, even when I'm being them. Does it get confusing? Yes. <laughs> but uh, it, it, that's what the rehearsal process is for, and we spend three and a half weeks just making sure that all of that is nice and solid before I get in front of people. What do you want people to take away from this? I want them to take away that arts integration is incredibly important for our children, and there are a lot of parallels that can be drawn through not only contemporary plays, but classic plays that can help them tease out things for their own lives. Arts integration, theater, of course, is my focus, is incredibly important, and funding should not be cut in those areas. Okay. 16 characters in one woman, Marty Goble. Thanks for coming and talking with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> The sounds of the Fratelli Rafati organ can be heard at numerous occasions at the Friendship Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. This organ is very rare, especially in the African American church setting. It's made in Italy by the Rafati Company. Nathaniel Gums, Director of Music and Arts at Friendship Baptist Church, said this is a powerful instrument. This organ is a very large organ, it has five manuals. Uh, 168 ranks of pipes and 68 ranks of digital stops. Also, there are over 6,000 pipes that actually go along with the instrument, as well as over 225 stops. The public probably sees close to 100 pipes, that's it. What makes it special? What makes it special is the uh, diversity of the instrument. You can play music as early as pre-Bach uh, up to until the latest music written for today. Um, my predecessor, Monty Bennett, who designed the instrument, he, um, 
designed a wonderful plethora of stops that most organs do not have on it, such as the uh, Tabia chorus. Um, he also designed, um, they have a um, nightingale stop, which is um, a bird call. And for those of us who don't know what a stop is, Gums explained. A stop is the organ sound. So you see those draw knobs on the instrument? That's actually a stop. There are, um, different, there are different families of stops. You have the flute stops, you have the uh, principal strings, um, you have the reeds, you have mixtures, you have uh, mutation stops. Different family and different styles or different fa yeah, family of stops or different sounds which actually designs makes the organ. How often is this instrument used? Every Sunday we use it. Every Sunday, um, the morning hymn may have a prelude, um, a postlude. Um, during the week as well, we have several services. We have uh, noonday services. We have um, funerals, of course, weddings. Um, but it's used pretty often. <laughs> Nathaniel Gums is a Yale graduate with a master's in organ performance and said the organ is a complex instrument. It's just not a keyboard or it's just not one keyboard, like a piano and three pedals. But the organ, it, you have to have a knowledge of the stops or have a knowledge of the family of stops and what goes together. You have to have a knowledge of registration. You have to have a knowledge of the different divisions of the instrument. You have to have a uh, um, pedal technique, of course. There's a pedal There's a pedal division as well as the manual. So you pretty much have to understand and learn and know the instrument before sitting at it. And many... Um, African-American churches today, we don't see pipe organs, we see uh, the Hammond organ, which is uh, mostly used for gospel music. Um, the Hammond organ is a whole, it's a different technique and use different style and technique opposed to the pipe organ. Um, this instrument here, I would say is used in a more traditional setting, um, opposed to the Hammond, which is more of a gospel or, tradi or more contemporary setting. Each organ is made differently. So Rufati has, there's a Rufati sound, there's an Ora Molar sound, or a Casavant sound. And compared to other pipe organs... It, it has a very rich sound, very rich and bright tone, which I do like a lot. It's very rich and bright. The Rufati organ lends itself to more classical literature or church music as well. Uh, traditional church hymns sounds, sound great, An accompanying anthem, choral anthems on the organ. Um, Things of that nature, more of the traditional sense, opposed to a gospel selection. Gospel works on the organ as well. I mean, it's all about the preference of taste. But um, pretty, much, it's a very eclectic and diverse instrument, though. I love playing the organ. Um, lots of pleasure. There's so many possibilities as far as colors, sound, touch, uh, technique. There's so much you can do, especially with five manuals and all of these possibilities of stops. Manuals, by the way, are keyboards. <laughs> so the five manuals are the five keyboards. Um, on the instrument. Um, there's so many possibilities. I mean, you can play anything from a flute, from a saxophone, to a clarinet, to a harp, to a glockenspiel. <laughs> there's so many different possibilities from playing this instrument. You have pretty much have an orchestra at your fingertips. Milwaukee's Nathaniel Stampley cuts a menacing figure as Mr. in the rep's production of The Color Purple. You know, Mr. is, uh, you know, someone that, you know, a lot of people have opinions about, you know, before they even walk into a theater. Um, and definitely uh, after they've seen the film as well, um, and those that have read the novel. Um, but I, I think, you know, to, to be the antagonist in the show, um, is, uh, you know, a great way for the plot to, you know, propel forward, but also, you know, who doesn't want to be the bad guy? <laughs> you know, and the thing that's interesting about Mister is that, you know, is a, there's a learned behavior 
that's there from his father. So he's only learning what he's, you know, been told and shared and taught to do. And so he's sort of taking that out on everybody closest to him. And that by the end, you know, through this incredible love and power, sheer power that Celie has, you see an absolute transformation of Mr. Nine years ago, he was in the original Broadway cast of the Tony Award winning musical. It was incredible. Um, you know, anytime you're on the ground floor of, of a new show and in such a powerful piece like this, um, it's a special opportunity for any actor, you know. And uh, I worked with some really, really talented folks. And he's been working with some really talented folks on national tours, on Broadway, and even in London's West End, where he played Mufasa in Disney's The Lion King. Well, the most important thing about being in Lion King, I met my wife on the show. <laughs> uh, she's an incredible concert dancer, uh, Lynette Costas. And, uh, but yeah, I had a great time. I started in the ensemble, uh, the first national tour of The Lion King, and uh, was with that show for many years. And uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful to have traveled on someone else's dime <laughs> around the world, but also like, you know, sharing such a great story, um, you know, with audiences, you know, uh, all over the country and just had a great time with the show. The native Milwaukeean is the son of Nathaniel and Carolyn Stampley. His father is the pastor of Heritage International Ministries, Church of God in Christ, Incorporated. Nathaniel started singing while in high school here in Milwaukee. I was in high school uh, at Whitefish Bay High School, and uh, there was a call for Florentine Opera to you know, fill out the opera chorus. So I auditioned and uh, I think the audition was at the War Memorial, and uh, I got in. You know, I was like 15 years old, and I, you know, listened to these glorious singers and an incredible score by Gershwin. I was just blown away, and I, I think that left an incredible mark for me, you know, personally and professionally. He was featured in the recent Broadway production of Porgy and Bess. He came home last year to play Crown in the Skylight Music Theater's production and he played the lead role in the National Touring Company. Did you plan on having a career in musical theater? You know, in, initially I didn't. Um, I thought that opera was going to be my claim to fame. And uh, I think somewhere in the back of my head that's still going to happen. But uh, I, I think, you know, the, what, was, what was interesting about musical theater was that I didn't have to wait another 10, 20 years for me to mature and, and be a leading role. Like, you know, after college, I was sort of, I was ready to, to be a leading man um, in a lot of musicals. So that, I took the more immediate route, if you will. What kind of preparation goes into fashioning a career in the theater? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I know my particular path is that, yeah, is that, um, you know, I grew up in the church. And so I know I have a lot of people praying for me all the time. So one, that always helps. That can never hurt, right? Uh, and then, I th you know, the other thing is that, you know, you have to put in the work. You know, what you see on the stage is, is the finished product, but there's a lot that goes on, a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work, um, and a lot of uh, collaborating with other artists um, during rehearsals, and even before rehearsals, that has to go on. And then once you get home, then you have to, as, the, as a person, you have to process all of that and, and be prepared for the next day or, or two of rehearsals. So, you know, as long as you're willing to do the work, you know, everything else will take care of itself. And the next 
When the rep's production closes in November, he says he's going to take some time off. I promised my wife that I will be home and as much as I possibly can with the children, with her, and uh, getting to know their teachers at school, over the kids, and their new friends. Um, so I, I plan to be home for, for a while. I got my gas, I got my soul, got heaven the whole day long. No use complaining, got my gas. Every cup step. This is Step Africa, a dance company whose style is polyrhythmic percussive, or stepping, as it is referred to by African American college students. actually didn't start out as a traditional dance company. It actually started out as a culture exchange from South Africans and Americans. The founder, Brian Williams, was a graduate of Howard University and he went over to South Africa to live and work. And while he was there, he saw a boy on the side of the road doing um, a particular rhythmic dance. You know, he was hitting his boots. Chip, 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 chip. And he was curious about it because he realized that it looked similar and sounded similar to what he did with his fraternity brothers back at Howard. He is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So he inquired about this dance, got curious about it, and then he formed a culture exchange between South Africans where they taught Americans uh, the South African gumboot dance and the Nglamu dance, which is a Zulu dance. And we would share with them and teach them stepping, hip hop, jazz, tap, those types of things. In 1994, Step Africa is made up of musicians, actors, people who have studied and trained in various forms of dance, tap, ballet, modern, African, hip-hop. They bring together dance forms that contribute to stepping, such as hamba. This dance company is preserving stepping as an art form, which is rooted in the black college fraternity and sorority system, and they are sharing it with the world. Well, it's really great because it's our story that we're sharing. It's our history that we're sharing. And um, it's been a great experience to do that. Most of the dance company members belong to black college Greek organizations. They teach learning and educational tools through stepping. So 
Uh, we like to talk about different things like teamwork, commitment, and discipline. We like to share those things with our audiences, especially our young audience members, um, when we go around the world doing this, this particular art form. We also like to teach workshops and get the students engaged and really get them, you know, fired up about the possibilities of going to college and being exposed to all of these different types of opportunities. It's really energizing for us as artists, as, as teaching artists, to know that what we do for a living, we're able to share it with young people and they're able to grasp it and give it back to the community. Step Africa is based in Washington, D.C. Their members are from around the country. Auditions for the company are held yearly in April or May, and you do not have to be a member of a fraternity or sorority to try out information at our website www.stepafrica.org and we do spell Africa with a K and you come in if you have a passion for stepping if you do it well you come in you show us what you got and you come and you show us and if, it, if the needs fit what the company you know needs then you're in and that's our program for this week for Black Nouveau I'm Joanne Williams thanks for watching